Hi everyone, it's Daniel here for Design Break and today I just wanted to talk about the transition from WordPress to Webflow, which is something we've been doing over the course of the past year. Okay, so I thought we'd just jump straight into it. Um, there's three things that I was going to talk about today because there's so much to cover with uh, WordPress and Webflow as a comparison and just about Webflow in general. So um, the three things we'll talk about is the setup experience, um, setting up on uh, Webflow versus WordPress, um, the design experience and the client experience for the kind of after the website's complete. So the first thing is the setup experience. So when you set up a WordPress website, the first thing you need to do is create a hosting environment. So um, a lot of hosts now allow you to do that with one click. So you just, um, you go onto their website, one click, it sets up a partition, it then installs WordPress. But you've kind of got to go through that process and have that set up first. Um, most of them will also allow you then to preview on a domain that's not your live domain in case you're setting up something um, on a domain that's got an old website on it. So anyway, um, you go through that process, you get WordPress set up, and then you can't instantly start designing on that. Um, you need to then install a page builder plugin or a theme builder. Um, so a really popular one is Elementor. It allows you to not just build pages, but build the whole theme as well. So you can build uh, you know, your footer, the header, the other pages. You know, If you want to build out your blog pages, you can do all that in Elementor. Um, so that, that setup process basically is a case of um, install the hosting partition, install WordPress, and then find the plugins and the theme and everything else, install all that in, and then you can start building your pages. So if you compare that to Webflow, it's much easier. You log into Webflow and you have all your projects listed and you just click plus or click on the new project um, and you give it a name and you're straight in. So you just create a new project, it instantly sets up all the hosting, everything else for it, it gives you a preview domain right out of the box, just ready to use. Um, and you can just go in, um, make the, uh, you know, start designing and then that's it, it's ready to preview. So you can definitely start designing much faster in Webflow, it's really, uh, smooths that process over of getting started on a project, especially if you're kind of, you know, chomping at the bit to do something creative, you can get straight in there with Webflow. Okay, uh, the, the next, I'm just touching lightly on these things, I'll maybe cover some of these elements in more detail in future videos, but um, the next thing is the design experience. So, um, there, this is a really huge topic and I will definitely go deeper on this in future, but um, when you're designing with WordPress or when you're taking a design you've created and building it in WordPress, uh, using a page builder, it, they've tried to make it as close to publishing applications and of the past as they can. So you don't um, build in terms of div blocks, which is the kind of building blocks in, that, that developers would think about. Um, you do build in terms of sections and columns. So I thought the best way to explain this would be with uh, a quick diagram. So I've got a simple layout here. It contains uh, a section, a container, and three columns. Um, the, uh, the section in yellow there, the container in green, and the columns in purple. So if you were to have this developed by a developer, you'd get something like this. Um, I've added the color coding so you can see there. Um, each, a div block, that you can see there where it says div class. So that div block is kind of the building blocks that are used um, in design, so in web design. So um, yeah, super clean code there to create a simple layout. Now, if we were to create this same layout in uh, Elementor for WordPress, uh, this is what you would get here. It's not immediately obvious what the big difference is here, but if you look closely, you'll see there's two outlines around uh, where the container is and where the columns are. And this is a, a simplification, but there's there's actually even more added, um, but I've just kept it simple for this example. So if we then look at the code that this creates, you can see there's um, this, basically there's the section um, and then there's two div blocks for every container that's created, and then another two div blocks for each of the uh, columns. And not only this, but Elementor adds a string of classes to each one. And I, again, I've simplified these down, but they're, sometimes they're even longer, considerably longer sometimes. Um, and they have these IDs mixed in with them. Um, and it's basically just a kind of jumble of stuff there in the code. Um, which isn't able to be used by a developer. 
So if we skip again to what you now get when you build in Webflow, you'll see it's actually the exact same as what the developer would create. And that's because you have control, and that's ultimately the, the, the big difference between them, is that Webflow gives you the control to name the, the classes that control the blocks. So, and, and in not just naming them, but also the, all the styling that goes with them. So any settings that you um, apply to a section, you can apply them to the name section. Whereas in Elementor, you just sort of add a section and then you have to go through all the settings and make the settings. It's doing all the class naming and additions in the background and that's where all the bloat and all the extra fat comes from. And so not only that, but Webflow allows you to then export the code because it's clean code. Um, developers are able to work with it uh, once you've exported it from Webflow. So it, it, kind of in summary, Webflow gives you a much more detailed uh, building experience. Elementor on WordPress is a much more simplified one. Both have their merits um, in certain aspects. If you want to really quickly throw something together, you might be faster in Elementor um, because you don't have to name classes. You can just draw, drag and drop elements, but anything beyond just quickly throwing something together, Webflow is going to definitely give you a far better experience in terms of what you can build and, and how you can uh, control the styling and things. So the final thing I'll talk about in this video is the client experience. So uh, once we've built a website and handed it off to the client, they're also going to want to make some changes themselves over time. The uh, built-in editor, as they call it in Webflow, is really, really simple to use. It's it's similar in the application to Elementor, which again, that's um, an add-on to WordPress. So. WordPress, the default back uh, back end of, of WordPress is actually quite cluttered and not not very focused, I don't feel. Um, but Webflow, it's really, really simple. You can click in, make edits to text really simply. Uh, also the collection editor, so that's their um, kind of database-driven CMS. Uh, it's really easy to make changes there. And as you can see here, you can make changes if you have Elementor for WordPress uh, on the front end of the website and see a live preview of how things will look. But the, I just feel the editor for uh, Webflow, it's, it's more stable, it's a more clean interface, and it, I just find that clients prefer the minimalist, easy to access editor that, um, that Webflow has because of the way you log into WordPress, you're pre always presented with the dashboard um, when they log in and the, da and, and the menu down the left-hand side. And it just, um, especially depend the, depending on the user access level your client has, can just be a bit of a, an intense experience if they're not computer savvy. Now, that's becoming less common now because most of our clients are tech savvy enough to, to work with the WordPress backend, but it's not always the case. So you've always got that to think about whether they're able to easily access the website to make changes. So um, yeah, that's just been a really quick blast through of the, um, the kind of three points there, the setup and uh, the design experience and the client experience. But there is so much to cover between these two CMS. And, and I also really want to talk about a few specific things about Webflow. So there'll be more videos in the future. Um, but yeah, for now, that's been it. And uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe to Design Break. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.